All right, we are now going to be doing something more uh, called dimensional analysis, more commonly known as our train tracks. So I want to start us off with solving how many seconds are in 24 days. So unless you are some genius, you probably don't know the perfect conversion, which is totally fine. So we're going to teach you how to do train tracks or these conversions to get to the answer we want. So to start us off, we need to draw our train tracks. Go ahead and dash them how you like. We can always add more. But what I really want us to start off with is putting our 24 days. Put our given in the top left-hand corner. And at the very end, we want to put what's important to us, where we're we trying to get to. Try to get to seconds, put it at the end. Let's keep it in sight of what our end goal is. Now, we need to come up with a more manageable way to get across to seconds, because days to seconds is a little bit more difficult. Can we think of any conversions that are pretty simple that would get us from a days to maybe a smaller unit or a more manageable unit? If you were thinking hours, that's where my head went. Certainly there's other ways to do it, but let's do hours. So instead of adding a conversion, I want us just to know that we can go days to hours. We're gonna put our numbers in later. We're gonna save that for now. Let's just do our units. Units are the most important. Uh, an important note I do wanna make before I get too far along here is we always wanna bury our like terms. If we've got our a term in the top left hand corner up here, we need them to be opposite or diagonal across. So they need to be diagonal. So if you've got days up top, it needs to be on the bottom on the next train track. With that being said, hours to seconds, that's still not a super easy conversion. Can we think of any middle step we can get to to get to seconds a little bit easier? Hopefully you came up with hours to minutes because that's where my head went. We got hours to minutes and then this last part, minutes. Notice minutes are going on the bottom like terms. We bury the like terms to our seconds. Okay, so we got to where we were trying to achieve. We got to seconds. Now we need to plug in our conversions. Think about if I've got one hours to days, we want everything to be set to a ratio of one to a different number if we can. Can't always, but that's the easiest way to convert. So we know that days are the bigger unit. So we're gonna say one day is equal to how many hours? You should say 24 hours. Now we look at hours to minutes. We could say one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And then one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So what you're gonna do here is you are gonna take all of the top numbers and all the bottom numbers and multiply them by each other. So you need to take 24 times 24 times 60 times 60 here. And what you should have gotten if I did this correct Just going to do a quick little check on my own calculator to make sure I don't throw anyone off and that's what I got here, 2,073,600. Now, that's the top half. Now we have to do the bottom half, which is pretty simple. We got one times one times one, so that ends up being one. So you're gonna take 2,073,600 divided by one, which ends up being itself, and you get 2 million 73,600 seconds. Sometimes it's not easy, always that easy. Um, we might maybe go from feet to meters. So maybe I have 137 feet and I want to go to meters. You're going to set up your train track again. Go ahead and start with where we're what we're given and what are we trying to get to? We're trying to get to meters here. We start with 137 feet. Now, 
I don't know about you, but I can't think of an easy feet to meter conversion. But I do know I can make things a lot simpler if I go to inches. So we're gonna convert here to inches. So once again, like term barium, which is on top. Okay. Now I don't know any inches to meter conversions, but if we think about a ruler, a ruler is a pretty simple centimeter to inch conversion. So let's let's see if we can get to our inches vary the like term to centimeters here. Oh, and that puts us in a really good place because now we can go centimeters to meters. Obviously, I got a little extra space here. That's okay. It's going to make me redraw that line. So I got where I needed to go. Next step is going to plug in our conversions. So we're going to say how many feet are in an inch. Well, we know, no, excuse me, how many inches are in a foot. Well, we know there are 12 inches in one foot. This conversion, if you ever have a conversion like centimeters to inches, I'm always going to give you that. I'm going to tell you that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. And we know our prefix table, we know 100 centimeters is equal to one meter. Okay, so now we're on to our next step of multiplying all the top parts together and all the bottom parts together. So you should get, uh, take 137 times 12 times 2, excuse me, 2.54. Let me write that a little bit better there. And if we take that over 1 times 1 times 100. So go ahead and take those two numbers. Create a fraction for yourself here. Should get 4,000. 175.76 divided by 100. Okay, so now your last step here is to solve your fraction. So you're going to take 4,175.76 divided by 100, and you should get 41.76. Meters. That's where we're going to round that one. Okay, we're going to have some more difficult problems, but I wanted us to get introduced to our, something called dimensional analysis here. It's really just our train tracks, how we can convert units. We're going to do this the whole year, so we're going to want to make sure we get this skill here.